This is a quick video that will go through the information that you need to provide after your micro-credential or badge has been approved in order for us to be able to create those items in Canvas Credential. So the forms that we're talking about look something like this. So it's the micro-credential pathway details for Canvas Credential or badge details for Canvas Credential forms. Now if you look at them they are basically the asking the same information for each of them so for the purposes of this video we will just look at the badge details for Canvas Credential although you'll note again the same seven questions appear on both forms. The information that is being requested in these forms is to allow us to create the actual badge in Canvas Credential. So as you can see here, this is the public page for our demonstration badge that we use. And you can actually access that by going to toro.badger.com forward slash public forward slash organization. In fact, from that website, you'll be able to access all of the badges that we offer through the Toro University system. If we look at the actual application, the first question asks the name to be displayed on the badge. And it indicates that it's best if we have 16 or fewer characters, and there's a maximum of 38 characters, and that includes spaces. So as you can see from the red square, this is the actual name that appears on the visual image of the badge. 16 characters including spaces means that the name will appear on a single line and you can see roughly how large it is based upon the screen. If you go more than 16 characters it takes you to a second line so the font size decreases by about 60 percent making it fairly small but still readable. If you were to go more than 38 characters including the spaces it means that you would no longer be able to read the letters that were on the actual badge itself. So you want to come up with a shortened version of the name of your badge or the name of your micro-credential for this first question. Now the second question is the full name of the badge that gets displayed on the main page. There is no character restrictions on this one. So this one you can make as long and as descriptive as you need it to be. Question number three asks for the description of the badge and as you can see from the red square below that that information again appears right underneath the name of the badge and when the badge was created and there's no character length on the description so you can make the description as short or as long as you need. One of the suggestions that I often make to individuals is think of it as a course overview that you might include on your syllabus where it's two or three or four maybe even five or six sentences that describe what the course is going to be about well this is a description of what the badge represents question four asks for the earning criteria and this basically just should be a statement that says this is what an individual or a learner or a student would need to earn the badge. Do they have to complete a course? Do they have to complete a course with a certain grade? Do they have to undertake specific activities in order to complete the badge? Whatever it is that they have to do in order to earn the badge is what you would include here. In most cases, this is probably going to be a sentence or two, maybe three. The next question asks about the alignment to specific standards or skills. Now, if this is a skills badge, you want to list the open skill that it refers to. And if you're not familiar with the open skills database, you can get that from lightcast.io forward slash open dash skills and that would give you approximately 32,000 different skills that you can include in there and we're able to link those specific skills to the badge description here. 
Now, if it's not a skills-based badge, don't worry about the Open Skills database. If you have a professional standard that it is aligned to, you can include that in there. Now, these professional standards have to be associated with a particular organization. These can't be just course objectives or badge objectives that you write yourself. They are ones that would be associated with the professional association or professional accreditor for your particular discipline. Now, your badge doesn't have to have either of these things, so you can actually leave question 5 blank if you wish. Next, question six asks if there's any tags or keywords associated with your badge. And you should think of these as terms that someone might use if they were searching through the Canvas catalog or Canvas credential database to try to find a badge associated with a specific topic. So as you're thinking about the tags or the keywords, think about the specific topics that someone might search that you would want them to find your particular badge when they searched those particular terms. Finally, the last question asks if your badge expires. So certain types of training that we have expire after a period of time because we want to make sure that individuals' information and knowledge and abilities around a particular item are kept up to date. One of the most common examples of this is if you've ever taken a CPR or first aid course, you know that it's only good for a year and then every single year you've got to renew it. Well, the particular type of knowledge that is included or skills or aptitudes or abilities that are included in your badge, do they have an expiry date? Is there a point in time when they are no longer current or is there a particular period of time when you want that individual to retrain and get a, an additional or an updated badge for that particular item? If the answer is yes, then you want to indicate when that particular badge expires. So does it expire a year after it's received, two years, three years, six months? Is it a specific date that it expires? So they will all expire on December 31st of 2025. It's up to you how you do that, and it doesn't have to expire. In many cases, some of the things that we include as knowledge, skills, or aptitudes in these particular badges don't expire. That Those items simply are good for as long as the individual can remember them. And if that's the case, indicate for question 7 that your badge does not expire. This has been a quick video that looks at some of the additional information that we require for Canvas Credential that you would fill out after you've submitted your initial application for your badge and or micro-credential and ideally either as it's being approved or shortly after it has been approved.